In the dark corridors of natural history, there are creatures whose names we know, but whose faces we can never truly see. Gigantopithecus, a name that sounds almost mythical and belongs to this category. A giant ape that walked the earth hundreds of thousands of years ago, its full story is shrouded in mystery. We have no complete skeleton, no preserved skull, not even a single limb bone, only fragments, massive teeth and pieces of jaw, tell us that it once ruled the forests of ancient Asia. And yet from these scraps, science has built the outline of a beast so large, it could dwarf a modern gorilla, a primate that might have stood 10 feet tall. To some, it is a prehistoric mark Marvel. To others, it is the origin of one of humanity's most persistent legends, the hairy giants we call Bigfoot or Yeti. But the truth of Gigantopithecus begins not in myth, but in a humble herbal shop in Hong Kong. It was the year 1935 when German paleontologist Gustav Heinrich Ralph von Königswald walked into a traditional Chinese medicine shop. Among the jars of dried roots, herbs and animal parts, he found something that caught his attention. Large fossilized teeth sold as dragon bones. These dragon bones were ground into powder and consumed as remedies for ailments. But Koenigswald saw something else. These were not just any teeth. They were enormous, far larger than any human molar. The enamel was thick, the chewing surface broad, and yet they clearly belonged to some kind of primate. Koenigswald purchased the teeth, and in doing so, he opened the door to an entirely new chapter. He named this mysterious giant Gigantopithecus Blackie, in honor of his colleague Davidson Black, a Canadian anthropologist who had made groundbreaking discoveries on early humans in China. The scientific challenge was immense. Imagine reconstructing an entire animal based solely on a tooth. Yet the teeth were not ordinary. They were massive, up to three times the size of a modern human molar. The wear pattern suggested a plant-based diet, while the enamel thickness hinted at a creature adapted to grinding tough vegetation. Over time, more fossilized teeth and fragments of jawbone were found, mostly in cave deposits in southern China, Vietnam, and Thailand. But still, no skull, no limb bones. Paleontologists could only guess at the body that had carried such powerful jaws. Using comparisons with modern apes, scientists estimated Gigantopithecus might have weighed anywhere between 300 and 500 kilograms, 660 to 1,100 pounds, and stood up to 3 meters tall when upright. If accurate, it was not only the largest ape ever to exist, but also one of the most physically imposing primates to walk the earth. Gigantopithecus belonged to the primate family tree, but its exact position has been debated for decades. Based on dental similarities, many researchers believe it was a close relative of the modern orangutan. This would place it within the Pongini subfamily. If this is correct, then the ancestors of Gigantopithecus likely originated in Africa and migrated into Asia around 12 to 15 million years ago. Over time, some lineages adapted to the dense tropical forests of Southeast Asia, evolving into specialized forms. Gigantopithecus was one of these, but its massive size remains an evolutionary puzzle. The fossils tell us that Gigantopithecus roamed during the Pleistocene epoch between roughly 2 million and 300,000 years ago. This was a time when the Earth was dominated by cycles of glaciation, with ice sheets advancing and retreating. For nearly a century, paleontologists have searched for more remains, hoping to find a skull or a limb bone that could reveal Gigantopithecus's true form. But, Ever since its discovery, Gigantopithecus has been linked to wild man legends. In China, the urine is described as a tall, hairy humanoid wandering the forests. In North America, the Sasquatch or Bigfoot occupies the same role. Some enthusiasts suggest that these sightings could be surviving Gigantopithecus, a species that somehow escaped extinction and lives in remote wilderness areas. The scientific community considers this unlikely. Gigantopithecus fossils are found only in Asia, and all known specimens are hundreds of thousands thousands of years old. The survival of such a massive, slow-breeding ape into the modern day would require vast, untouched habitats, something that no longer exists in the regions it once called home. And yet, the legend persists, fueled by the idea that we have barely scratched the surface of the world's biodiversity. After all, this was an animal we discovered by accident. Who's to say what else remains hidden? Gigantopithecus' world stretched across what we now call southern China, northern Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and parts of Thailand. The Pleistocene climate in this region was dominated by the Asian monsoon system. In the wet season, torrential rains transformed rivers into raging torrents, flooding valleys and feeding the lush vegetation. In the dry season, water sources shrank, forests dried at the edges, and some plants withered away entirely until the rains returned. For Gigantopithecus, whose massive body demanded constant fuel, the wet season was a time 
time of strength. The dry season was a test of endurance. The forests of Gigantopithecus's time were multi-layered ecosystems, each level alive with different species. The thick roof of the forest, where fruiting figs, mangoes, and jackfruit grew, attracting monkeys, hornbills, and possibly Gigantopithecus itself. The animal neighbors of Gigantopithecus are Stegodon, an elephant-like browser with massive tusks, eating similar high vegetation. Asian forest elephants, smaller than African elephants but equally dominant in shaping forests. Gaur and Bonteng, heavy-bodied wild cattle that grazed in forest clearings. Predators of Gigantopithecus era are Panthera tigris acautidens, a robust early tiger subspecies that could ambush large prey. Crocodilus siamensis, a crocodile species capable of taking down large mammals at water's edge. Clouded leopards and doles, smaller predators that worked in stealth or packs. Around 300,000 years ago, the Earth was cycling through dramatic Ice Age interglacial patterns. While Southeast Asia never froze like the northern continents, climate change there was still profound. Cooler, drier periods caused rainforests to contract into isolated pockets. Grasslands and savannas spread where thick jungle once reigned. Seasonal droughts became more severe, disrupting fruiting cycles. For an animal dependent on consistent, year-round plant food, even slight reductions in forest productivity were dangerous. Pollen records from ancient sediments show a marked decline in rainforest tree species during these dry phases. This created two problems for Gigantopithecus. Number one, less habitat overall meant fewer feeding grounds. Number two, isolation between forest patches reduced the chances of males and females meeting to breed. Fragmentation is one of the silent killers in extinction stories. Even if small groups survive in separate pockets without gene flow, they weaken over generations. Gigantopithecus was not alone in the shrinking forest. The same limited resources now had to be shared among early elephants, stegodons, deer and wild cattle, orangutans, highly mobile in the canopy, reaching fruit before it hit the ground. In times of abundance, sharing was possible, but in lean years, competition turned deadly. Smaller species with shorter gestation times could recover quickly from population drops. Gigantopithecus, with its slow reproductive rate, could not. During its decline, Gigantopithecus encountered a completely different kind of rival, Homo erectus. By at least one million years ago, early humans had spread into much of Southeast Asia. They were adaptable, opportunistic omnivores capable of using fire to clear vegetation, altering habitat, Tats, hunting and scavenging across a wide range of prey, harvesting plant foods before other animals could reach them. But, direct evidence of hunting Gigantopithecus is lacking, but indirect competition is almost certain. Humans could strip a fruiting tree of food in hours, leaving nothing for the giants who needed hundreds of calories more than a human. And then there is a bamboo collapse theory in which some scientists propose that Gigantopithecus may have faced a bamboo famine, a phenomenon known from modern panda populations. Bamboo flowers dies in synchronized cycles, sometimes across vast regions. If this happened in multiple overlapping areas where Gigantopithecus lived, the species could have faced a sudden, widespread food shortage. Unlike pandas, which can survive on other vegetation temporarily, Gigantopithecus may have been less flexible. And at its size, switching entirely to fallback foods may have been impossible for long. The very adaptations that made Gigantopithecus successful are enormous grinding molars, a gut for fibrous plants, and a bulk-based defense strategy which became liabilities when the environment shifted. Large size prevents migration over long distances at that time. Now let's talk about the legacy in folklore. Long after their bones turned to stone, the idea of giant apes persisted in human culture. Chinese legends of wild men roaming the forest sand. The Southeast Asian myths of hulking, man-like creatures and modern cryptid tales. Yeti Bigfoot sometimes speculated as distant cultural echoes of Gigantopithecus sightings by early humans. While there is no scientific link, it's tempting to imagine early Homo erectus telling fireside stories about the giants they once saw at the edge of the trees. So at last, its extinction was not an overnight event. Fossil evidence suggests Gigantopithecus populations were in steady decline for tens of thousands of years before disappearing entirely around approximately 300,000 years ago. One by one, the great feeders vanished into the quiet, their existence recorded only in the sediments of cave floors and the memories of predators who no longer needed to watch for a shadow as tall as a man's shoulders.